Hello everybody and welcome back uh -uh, to the up go did estate na 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 I tried to time opening my monster uh, with that it didn't go so well <laughs> but you know what the attempt was there and today we have a little bit of a plan oh the seed it's so good oh Oh, the scene is so good. Oh, okay, that kind of ruins our whole plan. We're <sighs> okay. Well, basically, the plan is we need to go get our trinkets back after the uh, mishap of the previous episode, where we lost um, uh, a few people. We'll say just a few people definitely no one important no one that we uh, really like definitely not four really good characters you know but alas that is simply how the cookie crumbles um i'm not sure if we can actually should we just get some of these things i feel like we should um, and bam. So we might have gotten a tiny bit stressed through that, but nothing that we can't solve with a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a visit to certain establishments. Alright, well, we did get back our really good trinkets, so all in all, the only thing we really lost was some really good people, which was... <laughs> we'll get them back like it's nothing. Um, what is... Ooh. That seems good. Okay, what do we got? We got rhino horns. Alright, let's set. Uh, uh, curse graves, 90% of runes, rhino horns, and 90% of runes. <sighs> See, um, right now she's getting rid of her disease, but when she's out, I think think we should take a visit to the courtyard. That's kind of what I'm feeling. I feel like it's time to get a courtyard boss down because even though we don't have a lot of Crimson Curse right now, it's going to keep stacking up. Like, we have three, but three's gonna exponentially grow. Kind of like our gold, how we're nearly at three million already. <laughs> the bank is OP. Alrighty, if we complete this dungeon, we complete the step of our challenge for collecting eight ancestral trinkets. Right now we have seven, and if we complete this one, we get eight, which hooray, that'll be one step closer to being able to defeat the final boss. But anyway, we bring Bridget the Fawn with the thick sap. The legendary racer, Gouge Throat Skewer, Maim and Drill. Ivern, the Alarune with the Iron Helmet, the Handy Satchel, Strike, Shunt, Shelter, and Brambles. We then bring Brian the Torchbearer with the Blessed Lantern, Potion S, Hollowed Conflagration, Beacon of Hope, Light the Way, and Inspiring Leadership. And then we finish the team off with... <laughs> I brought the wrong trinket. Oh, well, that sucks. Cantus the Sparrow, the Ancestor's Vial, and all of her abilities. I meant to take the map. The map is what I wanted to take. Now, despite having two Crimson Cursed edi uh, enemies... Crimson Cursed People, uh, we did not get a warning about... Uh, about a certain bug-hating boy. So, it seems like we're in the clear. Back to the darkness. Huh? Well, we crit right away, that's... Mm, I mean, it, you know, crit is good, but... Uh, didn't want to crit right away. He's almost dead, so 
Tell you what, we're gonna try and soften him up. <laughs> oh, that. I forgot to enable Do Not Disturb. Don't mind that. Yes, you're stunned. You will soon learn to regret your decision. Um, we're going to Beacon of Hope. The thirst. Enjoy the bleed. Or wait, no, you don't take bleeds, you only take blights. Right. I knew that. 16 damage, not bad. Manning wine! Well, I can clearly see who your main target is. Sadly, we have a little bit too much support for you to be able to pull that off. Subterranean skewer! So it's done. Alright, it's done. Um, not dead. I want you closer to death. I don't like you. The thirst. <laughs> You can't hit one of your own, you fool! Hunger checks are going to be killer with the Ancestor's Vile. Wow, what is that crit? Yeah, right, what is that? I'm a god! Well, I guess we're not doing that. Might be a mistake, but we're gonna increase our accuracy and crit chance, which means... She's going to crit. Now that's a lot of value! Bombing run? Ah! Don't bleed! Don't double bleed! Alright, it's only single bleed. Hi! Man, she's critting like crazy. <laughs> Which is great, don't get me wrong. But it means we have a lot of bleeds to deal with. Luckily, it's, it's not like we're short on money to be able to cure it, but... You know, I just... I'm a penny pincher, what can I say? It's not very fun without a little bit of risk. Now is it? We sleep? Ugh. Yeah, that shuffle honestly isn't the worst. No, she's bled, she's dead! No, <laughs> she got bled, she's gonna die! Oh, why? Come on! I know he has an extra 20%, but it doesn't make it, it... It doesn't make it feel any better. See what I mean? If someone's bled and they're on death's door, they're just... They're just dead. Ah! Ah! No! Uh. Why do I even bother? <laughs> well, that was great. <laughs> you may be asking, Shadow, why are you so mad, bro? In which case I respond, because it's my own fault. <laughs> and that makes me upset. <laughs> It was, it was my fault that she died, and that makes me upset. Now we're two away from being able to... Ah! Whatever. Uh, it's fine. I took the chance knowing full well what might happen, and it happened. Consent... Uh, I hate it. I don't... Uh, I don't like it. Also, I just want to know. Do dots have an increased chance to kill? when someone's on death's door, because if you've watched a majority of my episodes, you've noticed a little trend, and so have I, that if something has a dot on them, and they're on death's door, they're dead instantly. Nothing you can do about it, but nine out of ten times, <laughs> they're just gonna croak right then and there, and it's so frustrating. Because it's gotten to the point where I notice it, and that just makes it worse every time it happens, because it keeps happening. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, what's that? You have a one over one bleed, and you're on death's door? Oh, I guess you're dead. <laughs> so, 
<sighs> okay, well. Rant over, but yeah, do, do bleeds have an increased chance to kill? Because I'm, I'm actually really curious. Alright, we're doing some leveling so that I can, uh, take a chill pill for a bit. Yo, me, V2, the blazing lord with the grotesque blade, potioness, all of her abilities, unnamed daughter of the second with a handy satchel, the banshee's bonnet. Demoralize unlimited blades, midline disruptor, long Julius's blade, Kiki the antiquarian with the last light, the overture of bucks, festering vapors, flash powder, for, uh, fortifying vapors, invigorating vapors. Lyra the falconer with the iron helmet, the ancestor's map, quick shot, crippled shot, I thief ravage, volley, fire, flurry. That one is so hard for me to say, I don't know why. And adapt, and off we go. Alright, this went pretty smooth, besides her getting stressed out like crazy. It figures, while I'm not recording, everything goes correctly. Um, so as I use her, I am discovering, I, I think I do enjoy her style of combat, which is crit, get a turn, do a tiny bit of damage. That, that's, that's the long and short of what she does. It is still a little confusing to me. I'm still trying to figure her out. But, all in all, she does seem like she's pretty good. Um, only thing I might say is absolutely do not use her abilities that uh, give her stress. Because you don't want her to become afflicted. She is like going to do more damage than most of the enemy teams. Merciful, ugh. Eager to fight, not good on her because she wants to stay in the second position. Shredder can be good. And that doo doo. Alrighty, what do we got here? So, we still have the Hag Witch we need to go deal with. Um, we also have the Vengeful Spirit. Um, I'm not going to consider them something we need to do, but we do need to go kill the three bosses in the Endless Mode. Uh, we also have the Viscount to go deal with. Um, I think we're just going to play it safe, maybe go for one more level. And then uh, we'll just kind of see where we go from there. Alrighty, the leveling continues with a brand new friend, Gordis the Golem. It's a she. I checked. That's why the name Gordis. It works. <laughs> if if you even know where the name Gordis is from, but anyway, that's fine. She has the iron helmet, as you can see. She's wearing it right there. <laughs> the Martyr's Halo. Bisect concuss. Rebuild and incinerate. Yukari V2, the Duchess with the legendary bracer, the handy satchel. We didn't bring her best trinket in the game. Oh well. Sanguine Edge, Crimson Lance, preposterous challenge, castigate. Wise Mari, the practitioner with the sanctioned. Onimyoro. Onimori. Onimyoro. Robes. I think I said that right. The Ancestor's Map, Combusting Talisman, Invoke and Enra, Bustling Gale, and Thalassic Remedy. Anna the Musketeer with Potion S, The Siren's Conge, Execution Shot, Piercing Shot, Remedial Bandage, and Distracting Shot. Now, the interesting thing about the Golem is you cannot technically heal the golem. Only the golem can heal the golem. You got that? <laughs> oh my. What a fight to start with. This is this is borderline unfair. What are we supposed to do against it? Look, we couldn't even kill him. Oh, this fight is already over. It is already far from over. Anyway. Um, Gollum, as you can see, heals, um, on kill, uh, has a really big self-heal, and heals on kill. So, the gimmick about the Gollum 
is the golem cannot be healed, as you see from the disease we just got. Immune to disease, high resistances to bleed and bl yeah, to bleed and blight cannot be healed by any means other than her own abilities. So, really interesting class. Um, closest thing I can think to is the milkmaid who cannot be healed by food items. Not that they're, uh, not that they're the same beyond that, but, you know, it's basically the only modded class I can uh, refer to. But yeah, very interesting. I like that a lot of classes are starting to get sort of that gimmick to them. Where it's like, oh, they're really strong, but they can only heal themselves, or they don't get food healing, but they're immune to disease, you know. I just, I think it's neat. Also, I just want to point out, because I thought I had big-brained it, uh, regen, for example, from the Martyr's Halo, uh, does not work. So, you know, just so you know. was right. That seemed a little bit wrong. <laughs> but any mean Okay, uh I think that's a bug. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure I okay. Now, was that a bug or was that a weird interaction with the martyr's halo? Not sure, but definitely not supposed to be getting healed. Alright, we got lucky with a lot of empty rooms. Uh, there was a ton of stress, but all in all, I'd say it went pretty okay. Our loot haul was certainly high. Let's see how much money we got. Rum, bum, bum, bum. Oh! 17.5k even though it technically doesn't matter because we're over 3,000 oh sickly gross from beyond well we can revive one person and it's either going to be Unalesca or Erzin I'm gonna have to check the rules because didn't I mention that I'm not allowed to revive people maybe that was a different challenge run I, I'll have to check but, hmm, I am thinking, and I am thinking quite hard about what we are going to do next. Getting the Ancestor's Lantern might be a good idea. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. But, first things first, with the power of clever editing, we are going to revive Unaleska. I think we're, you know, I hate having to leave Arizon in the graveyard, but I, you know, it, uh, it's, it's a max level hero. It, uh, uh oh well. Also, risk taker, um, on a healer, not good. Now, unless you're playing her aggressive. Like, you're going for Slither, Hiss, and uh, Petrifying Gaze. Otherwise, <laughs> not the best. Which I guess technically she's built for it. Like, she has Brawler. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe we'll have to do that. Ugh. Well, we may have lost a lot of people, but it's not nearly as bad as the Torchless Estate. So, yeah, <laughs> that's something. Okay, I'd say we could probably get away with a little bit more leveling. However, I'm also contemplating just going to kill the hag. 
and getting her off the list, but based on what we've seen, our, uh, our success ratio against her is not very good. So my only question is, like, actually, what would happen if Daughter of the Second what? How do I how do I phrase this? What would happen if we used Daughter of the Second and she used Unlimited Blades? Would the Hag use uh, Into the Pot? Because if she doesn't, this seems like a great way to just get free damage and potentially just finish out the fight really early. Not sure, but that does sound like an actually good plan for once. I think we're gonna do just a tiny bit more leveling. This episode has basically become the... We're catching up because we're so far behind. <laughs> That's basically what this episode has become. Now, technically, the hood, if built correctly, could just be a dodge tank because her dodge chance can get so high that it's she potentially will not get hit at all um, now you do need the exact correct buffs on her for her to be able to do that easily but I'm kind of wondering if that's something we could do in the future because I like the hood She's not very good, but I like her. <laughs> um, okay, let's figure something out. Let, let's get a bit of leveling in, and then we're going to see what happens. Also, just real quick, has a disease where she eats too much, and she has a tapeworm. I think I found out why she eats too much. Okay, we are in, and we bring Gordus the Golem once again with the Ancestor's Belt, the Handy Satchel, Bisect, Concuss, Rebuild, and Incinerate. Same things as the previous time. And then we bring Penelope the Hood with the 34 Leaves Clover, the Tempting Goblet, because she can only virtue, I'm pretty sure. I'm kind of sure about that. What? Oh, whoa, what is this? Piece of cake, sip of wine, and there's a cat. And then we bring Anka the Eternal with the Overture Box, the Ancestor's Map, Channel Scorch, Rejuvenate, and Hars... Harus... Haruspex. Harusupex? Haruspex? I don't know. <laughs> I'm... By the way, live on the hood. Pretty much, if you get live on the hood, you want to lock that in instantly. It makes her broken. She becomes... Literally, you can get over 100 dodge. Easy. It's insane. And then, of course, we bring Lyra the Falcon out with the Ancestor's Script. Potion S, Quick Shot, Crippling Shot, uh, ID for Ravage, Volley, Fire, Flurry. I keep wanting to say Volley Flurry. Ugh and adapt okay so right away we're gonna see how good this dungeon's gonna go now we're gonna see how good it's gonna go here we 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 go any second any second here we go there it is well rip the author begins to crack well I mean, we might be able to stress heal her down. We'll see. Um, it could be bad. I'm kind of holding out hope. Even though this, <laughs> this episode hasn't gone great, maybe this is our turning point where everything starts to turn around. Well, that's an additional 21 stress. That's going to make things a lot harder, isn't it? What is... Oh, my... The game's like, oh, it's going to turn around, is it? <laughs> Are you sure it's going to turn around?
Uh, what? Uh... Well, that sucks. I've never had this happen before. <laughs> um... Well, I'm not going to say the dungeon was going good. But we're almost done. We have, like, one fight. Yeah, we have one fight left, if we're lucky. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to restart, though. Which, that sucks. Alright, we did end up getting lucky, and it was only one more fight we had to do. Um, now, I do know... That you can uh, stress heal with rejuvenate. However, that requires them to be full health. And long story short, Gordas was never full health. So, <laughs> sadly, not a lot of stress healing could be done. This move is really hard to pull off unless you have a backup healer. Uh, well, the stress healing portion of it is hard to pull off. Um... Most of the time, you're just not full health. Like, <laughs> that's just kind of how it is, sadly. At least that is if you're me. A lot of goodies. And... Hardy. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe that's exactly what we need. Profuse Bleeder. Mm. Natural Swing. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, let's put some people away so that they can feel... Mm, mm, so that they can feel better! We also rescued another exorcist, which we're going to add to the team. Alright, so... Anything good? Not really. Alrighty, let's think... I'm thinking we go for Gentle Tide, and then a boss should spawn, which I think is going to work to our advantage, because if we have Gentle Tide and we go for a boss, that's going to be ideal. That's also kind of what I'm thinking of doing with the Hag. I forget exactly what it's called, but we want the buffs. We want wheel buffs, basically, before we go fight the hag, because I'm not confident in our chances. Um, and we're definitely not bringing Miss Appleton, because she's cursed. And, uh, the hag, you know, her pot is just stronger. That's just how it is. But, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I went for a way more compilation thing for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of a test thing, but my thought was, overall, more would be shown off. We'd be getting more progress, but it, you know, takes a lot more time to uh, do it this way. But, let me know what you guys thought. Be sure and comment down below if you like the more compilation way of doing it. And be sure to smash that like button, push that subscribe button if you want to join the Shadow Council. And, <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.